and uh, uh, the soup of uh, this uh, platform to present our, our case. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm um, president of uh, Innovative Power Tech uh, here in the US and Nigeria, and also the chair of the uh, COVID 19 vaccine PACS team of uh, African Vaccine Manufacturing Initiative. And uh, I currently lead the uh, Huawei FOA's local uh, uh, vaccine manufacturing subcommittee. Now, as we know, as a way of uh, introduction, uh, the development and manufacture of COVID 19 and other vaccines in Africa creates a strategic long term benefit for the continent to be pandemic ready. We know that the ability to manufacture hundreds of millions and billions of doses of vaccine requires the vaccine manufacturing capacity of the entire world. And according to Corey, uh, in their article that was published in Science uh, in 2020, uh, I quote, uh, there is an immediate need to fund the necessary power manufacturing infrastructure, including a few finished steps that provide viable vaccine products for distribution. And uh, as you all know, uh, uh, currently, presently, that is less than 1% of all the vaccines that are used in Africa are sourced from within Africa. A situation that makes the continent uh, vulnerable to epidemics and pandemic. And the recent uh, you know, AU African CDC Vital Conference uh, uh, on expanding vaccine manufacturing set a goal that by 2040, 60% of the vaccines for daily administered on the continent should be manufactured in Africa itself. So Innovative Biotech uh, has positioned herself uh, to respond to this challenge by es 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 establishing a domestic vaccine manufacturing opportunity in Africa to serve the uh, African continent. Uh, they are, as you know, there are 10 known existing local vaccine value chain players in Africa. Uh, mostly uh, these uh, uh, hubs are concentrated in North Africa, South Africa, and, and, and Nigeria. Uh, you know, they only uh, uh, manufacture, manufacturer that is WHO qualified, you know, is the uh, Institute for Sure that has that has been producing yellow fever vaccine using the traditional method since 1938. Now, uh, you know, they are increasing their capacity now because their current capacity is just about 7 million doses of uh, yellow fever vaccine per annum, and they are increasing that capacity now to uh, about 20, uh, 23 million doses uh, per annum. And uh, they are also trying to get into the COVID. Uh, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing as well. Then, uh, of course, uh, Vaxera uh, in Egypt uh, uh, you know, does uh, the finish of some vaccines. Uh, the Institute uh, Pasteur in Tunis, uh, they do some work on the uh, BCG vaccines uh, production. And the Barabar uh, in South Africa, uh, they also have a fifth finish uh, facility uh, with a capacity of about 3,000 uh, doses per annum. Uh, they are trying to go into the upstream uh, production cycle right now, and they are partnering with uh, uh, a US-based company. Then you have, uh, of course, uh, your Institute uh, of in Morocco, and uh, the Public Health uh, Institute in, in Egypt and in uh, Ethiopia is also trying, planning to produce vaccines. And then you have uh, bio vaccines in Nigeria that is also planning to produce uh, EPI vaccines, and then of course uh, uh, innovative uh, biotech. Now, if you look at the current uh, vaccines that are available and in development uh, for COVID, uh, they fall into four major vaccine platforms. The first is the inactivated, of course, where uh, the virus is grown and then uh, different companies uh, are manufacturing that uh, uh, in mainly in Asia, in, 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 in India and in China and there's a company in France also that is uh, uh, manufacturing uh, inactivated uh, vaccines here to grow the virus and, and the companies with different uh, methods for inactivating the, the virus and then uh, of course, that is introduced and then broken down the epidemic 
and then the immune system makes uh, the necessary immune response to protect against COVID. Then the second vaccine platform is the protein base. Uh, here, the protein is just injected, and then uh, the immune system is broken uh, into uh, uh, every dose, and then taken up uh, 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 by the immune system and mounting the necessary immune response. Uh, in, the, in the broader sense, VIP based vaccines are also considered protein based uh, vaccines. Then you have, and before now, all existing vaccines fall into this uh, category. And then with the COVID, uh, now we have the viral vector vaccines. Of, of course, we have both a non replicating and replicating viral vector vaccine. Uh, of course, the Ebola uh, vaccine is the only. Uh, uh, vaccine before now that was licensed uh, uh, as, as a replicating viral uh, vector. Uh, and then, uh, of course, they carry the genetic material of uh, the virus and then inject into I mean, the, the, the cells and the DNA is then transcribed into RNA. And again, if you use a naked DNA, it goes straight into the uh, nucleus where it is uh, transcribed into RNA and then the RNA uses the uh, cell uh, protein making mechanisms to, to make proteins and then again uh, uh, broken into epidose for recognition by the immune system and then mounts the necessary immune system depending on the problem that is used either mainly antibody uh, mediated immunity or both antibody and cell mediated immunity. Now, uh, what are virus-like particles? Uh, VLPs are structural mimics of native viruses. That means they are like the native viruses, but they are non-infectious because they are particles that do not have the genetic material of the virus, so they are unable to replicate. The VLPs are a key candidate for uh, vaccine production because of their similarity to native viruses in structural, biochemical, and immunological composition. The VIPs are highly immunogenic due to their particular nature and the display of a dense array of surface antigen in the case of uh, uh, COVID, of course, the, the spike protein. And as we know, uh, they are very safe uh, and they are suitable for all demographics. Uh, they are suitable for children, for adults, and family. And they have been previously used to produce two very successful vaccines. Uh, hepatitis B vaccine that has been used uh, for the past 50 years. So the safety profile is well established and then the uh, HPV vaccine that has been in use for over 20 years. So it has uh, almost five decades and, 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 and two decades uh, uh, safety history. And you know, uh, two, both vaccines are highly immunogenic. Uh, the efficacy uh, in almost all trials, 100%. Uh, after the third uh, dose, uh, you have a long life uh, protection, and, and in some cases, it's recommended that you take a booster dose every uh, uh, 10 years. So, is the ideal platform uh, for uh, vaccine uh, development? So, manufacturing of COVID and other VLT based vaccines can be rapidly activated using scalable suspension control. Uh, either you use the insect cell or you use the mammalian cell. So we have we have used both uh, insect cell and uh, mammalian cell, but we are moving ahead uh, with the uh, mammalian cell because we we got uh, better expressions uh, uh, using that. So uh, interestingly, as you can see, we use this platform to uh, make uh, a COVID uh, uh, vaccine. Uh, the exciting thing about this technology is that uh, you are not only expressing the spike protein, as you know, apart from the inactivated vaccines that are currently used, all the other vaccines use just the spike protein, and then they use the spike protein from the original uh, Wuhan strain. So, uh, again, because of the issue of variants, uh, we decided to use the beta variant, which is uh, uh, originally uh, identified in South Africa. And, and that, uh, as of today, is the most difficult uh, variant to neutralize. So we decided to use that. So we're already making uh, a second generation vaccine. So whatever data I'm going to present here is based on 
the spike protein of the South African spray. Now, the interesting thing about the platform is that uh, we are also expressing all the structural proteins. Uh, we are expressing the envelope protein, uh, the nuclear protein, and then the matrix in addition to the uh, spike protein. So you get additional protection. And again, uh, these other structural proteins are pretty more on now. Uh, than the uh, spike protein. So we see that this is an ideal uh, platform uh, that we have to overcome the issue of uh, emerging uh, uh, variants. So uh, we anticipate that the uh, clinical material, the GLP material, which I'll talk about briefly, uh, will be delivered by the first quarter of this year and we hope to commence the phase one trial we want to do a phase one trial in parallel here in the US, so we work with FDA. Uh, and then uh, in Nigeria, we work with NAMDAM, so that we do phase one trial in parallel. And then uh, we want to include phase two, you know, phase one, phase two trial at the same time, so that uh, by early next year, uh, we will commence uh, phase two trials. Uh, we will be safe to do the phase two trial. Uh, in, in Nigeria and then South Africa, South Africa again, uh, they have very good clinical trial platforms and then uh, they stray uh, the variant that we're using, uh, that we're using this vaccine is, is the uh, beta strain, which uh, was first identified in South Africa. And then we also want to work with uh, an institute in Brazil to also do the basic trial. So, uh, this will help us look at the effect of the uh, vaccine against all the, uh, the uh, variants of, of concern. And we hope that uh, the phase two trials will be completed by second or third quarter of uh, 2022. That's next. Week. So again, uh, the uh, SARS CoV 2 DFPs uh, uh, were produced in suspension culture of the cell using various structural proteins together with the stabilized spike protein, uh, surface protein. So we made some modifications to the spike protein to stabilize it so that the neutralizing uh, epidote will be exposed to the immune system. Now, the release DFPs were purified uh, there for macrography and examined by negative staining microscopy. Particles show moderate uh, pleomorphism and typical projections of the spike protein, as you can see uh, here, that characterizes the uh, coronavirus uh, group. So, uh, this VLP, uh, as you can see, uh, was not found using uh, uh, the electron microscope. Now, the VLPs uh, were purified by anion exchange from hydrography and included uh, fractions from the funnel. Uh, were analyzed their Western blood using anti spike specific proteins. So you can see uh, uh, the expression of time using uh, Western blood. And, and, and the spike uh, uh, protein expressed on the surface of the particle for their modification in one of the clinical sites, like I said, and uh, the sulfide bridges that stabilize the molecule for the best display of neutralizing antigen antigenic vitamin. So we expect, uh, of course, uh, I'll talk about that, that this is going to be uh, uh, a great uh, product that will uh, induce a broad uh, uh, neutralizing antibodies against uh, all the uh, variants uh, of concern that are currently circulating. Now, uh, we got a slot. Of course, the next step is to create uh, the master cell bank and then the uh, working cell bank. So uh, we are working with uh, BioReliance, uh, which is uh, a subsidiary of MUD uh, here in the US. Uh, we have a slot for end of this month uh, where the material will transfer to them for creation of the master cell bank and, and characterization of, 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 of it uh, as well. So the characterization uh, will include about safety testing, which is basically the cell banking and testing, the viral clearance, blood release testing, analytical about, uh, and bio bioanalytical testing. And then we do the product characterization, which we include the uh, analytical chemistry, binding and potency, and then validation and genetic uh, toxicity. 
So based on the timetable uh, that we have, uh, the cell line duration, uh, I mean uh, the master cell band should be ready by uh, September. And then uh, once we have that, it goes straight to a, a contract uh, manufacturer, which I will talk about with really. you. Okay. Now, we have uh, uh, created the uh, manufacturing process, as you know, uh, this is a uh, forward integration, and that uh, factory is not uh, generic, that you just do that produce any vaccine. The process has to be uh, developed first before uh, the facility is built. So, as you can see, we have uh, developed the process. Uh, we have our, of course, the master cell band, uh, which is going to be created. Uh, by between now and September, and then the casting, and then of course you do your transmission, and then fermentation, and then clarification, uh, which is one or two steps, and chromatography, and then you have your sterile bulk uh, product. So the sterile bulk product can be sent to any uh, field finish uh, station anywhere in the world for for field finish for for that region. So this uh, manufacturing uh, uh, process, the real manufacturing process, will now be sent to our main partner, uh, and, uh, They will design the VIP uh, uh, facility, uh, turnkey modular facility that uh, will be shipped to the manufacturing site so that uh, uh, the production, uh, upstream uh, production uh, or drug substance production uh, uh, we happen. So this uh, will uh, get done uh, between this year and, 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 and next year. But while we are waiting for that, we, because of the urgency of uh, uh, this vaccine, we don't want to wait to have uh, the domestic uh, uh, manufacturing set up before we start producing uh, the vaccine. So we have engaged uh, the uh, services of the contract manufacturer here in the US, uh, by G. Uh, they have, you know, uh, different uh, fermenters up to 500 for now, and then they are, by any means, they will have a thousand fermenters. So that will enable us to uh, complete all the phases of input trials. And in fact, uh, after the phase one trials, uh, we intend to continue to be producing and uh, uh, storing the doses. Uh, so that uh, immediately the phase of is completed, uh, we will have enough doses to uh, uh, start pulling out uh, immediately. And so you can see we are doing both the uh, production uh, using the contract manufacturer and then building a uh, domestic uh, manufacturing capability uh, in, in, in concurrent. Now, they of course demonstrated that this, uh, I mean, the uh, expression. Uh, was successful using both the electron microscope and then uh, Western blood. Uh, as we speak, uh, this vaccine is in, um, in mice now, uh, 10 minutes uh, by experiment. So we have uh, four uh, groups. Uh, one uh, is taking just the VLP, the other one, second group is taking VLP, we have a proprietary adjuvant, which uh, we tested in our previous uh, uh, vaccines, HIV and Ebola vaccine, uh, with excellent results. So uh, we hope uh, that this will enhance the immunogenicity of, of the DLP. And then we have uh, ALO, ALO uh, the adjuvant that have been previously used uh, in, in vaccines. And then uh, we have another group with another adjuvant. So we are following. Uh, the whole idea about this is to look at the adjuvant that we give out the best result, and that will be adopted. And we're using uh, uh, two different doses uh, 50 microgram and then 100 microgram. Now, uh, we have created the, of course, we envisage this to be a two dose vaccine, so the mice receive uh, the zero, they, they got their first dose. Of course, we bled them before uh, giving them the vaccine. And then uh, boost that dose uh, on day 28. You know, and then uh, we uh, take uh, blood sample at three uh, time points, which is uh, 28, and then 0, 28, and, and 7 days. 
and the serum antibody should be determined by the lysers. So you can see that uh, once that is completed, uh, which is going to be this week, so next week we are going to get this uh, hot data on neutralization. So we have created uh, all the major areas of, of concern. Uh, uh, of course, the D1, D5, one which is now the beta prevalent uh, for the origin of uh, that originated in South Africa. Uh, because the vaccine is based on that. So we want to see both homologous neutralization and then heterologous neutralization. So we have created studio balances of the uh, T1 uh, variants, which is now called gamma, uh, that originated in Brazil, and then the D177, which is the dominant strain uh, here in the US and in Europe now, uh, which was uh, originated, I mean, which originated from the UK, I mean the UK and it's called the Alpha. And then uh, the first uh, uh, the strain uh, that was isolated in the US, uh, of course, the Washington uh, strain, which is uh, Epson or something, uh, the new name. So we have these pseudo viruses uh, created, and then the serum will be tested against these zero uh, pseudo viruses, so we'll see how broad the uh, neutralization using the uh, the beta strain as uh, 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 immunogen will look like. But the interesting thing about the DRP, as you can see, is a very flexible platform. If for any reason any of these uh, uh, viruses is not neutralized, it will be very easy for us to incorporate the spike into that uh, platform that I've shown you. So, uh, going forward, we want to see if this one vaccine can neutralize against all the variants. If there is a need to incorporate any variant that is not neutralized, it's very easy to do that. You can incorporate as many antigens as possible uh, in the platform uh, that, that we have. So, uh, in summary, uh, we have uh, expressed the spike protein of the original strain and the beta variant. Uh, that was best identified in South Africa, uh, which is, of course, the appropriate variant to focus on as the second generation vaccine. The reason is because, uh, based on the recent data that uh, was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, the current vaccines, for example, AstraZeneca, uh, efficacy against the uh, beta strain is just about 10%. Uh, and Novavax uh, vaccine. Uh, efficacy against the beta strain is just about 49.4%, uh, and then uh, for Johnson and Johnson uh, is about 57%. So it's a very difficult uh, uh, barrier uh, to, to to neutralize, and and that was the reason we chose that as a second generation vaccine because based on uh, some published data, uh, antibody. Uh, uh, produced uh, by this variant tends to have a broader neutralization uh, 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 than the other uh, known variants. So, like I said, uh, we plan to this one trial uh, in the US and Nigeria, and, and then uh, we have a contract manufacturer, uh, that will be uh, Biogen, uh, that will produce the initial doses for all the clinical trials that, that are needed uh, for last century. And then, uh, you know, alongside, we'll be working with women to, to design and, and build uh, the PFP-based um, uh, upstream uh, process. And then, the entire process eventually will be transferred to uh, Nigeria once our manufacturing facility is up and running. So there are several advantages for manufacturing vaccines locally. Uh, as you can see, the end-to-end vaccine development manufacturing capacity uh, will enable the sub-region to handle it, uh, this current pandemic and future epidemics or pandemics. The facility will also be used to produce vaccines for the sub-regional national program of immunization. So it's not uh, we are building the like end-to-end. So we have the uh, offspring for the production of the drug substance and then the uh, fill and finish. So the fill and finish can be used uh, to produce uh, 
you know, uh, other vaccines uh, from off. Now, this will create an attractive platform for global vaccine companies to localize production. As we know, uh, uh, most of the companies are going to Syrup Institute because they always have the capacity uh, to manufacture vaccines. So, if we have uh, this uh, platform of manufacturing capacity on, on the continent, uh, it will be easy for uh, those factories to license uh, technologies from uh, other manufacturers. Now, uh, it will support the response to disease outbreak and scale up the deployment of experts in the region, and then it will train scientists in the sub region of vaccine development and other vaccine related activities. And finally, it will strengthen the supply and distribution channels and cold chain. Uh, system. So uh, these are our partners, uh, collaborators, of course, like the same month, uh, have been tremendous in assisting us. Uh, we have uh, uh, some of their staff here in the unit dedicated to this process. I mean, project helping to scale up uh, the, the process via their uh, uh, subsidiaries, uh, people and then uh, bioreliance, and then the uh, technobars and medicine are our uh, technology partners. So thank you very much for the opportunity, and I'll be happy to take questions. Because, uh, I mean, like I said, as we are building the process and the develop already, as we are you know, uh, building our facility, we can do that as well. So that is one option that, that uh, you know, we can discuss. Any question? The rule before uh, the tenant signing go, I know that it's just the start of the day, somewhere where it is. So any questions? Because if not, I will ask the last question. Simon, if we start tomorrow, you will be willing to come and help? Oh, sure. <laughs> I mean, we are in this game. <laughs> we, we, we were helped by other people. So this is our uh, continent. Uh, the whole idea is to make sure that uh, we have you know, functional facilities uh, for the continent. I mean, look at what we are going through uh, right now. We can get vaccines if we have the money and so uh, there is a need for us to fast track uh, this process. I would be very happy to uh, partner with you to make this happen. We are getting a partnership. So we have work this morning and we have uh, in a farm and now we have a sign with us, so I think by the end of the day, maybe we get our prototype for a vaccine, so that would be great. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you. <laughs>